Three California communities are now mourning the victims of mass shootings. The state just had its third mass shooting in the past week. Uh, the latest happened in Half Moon Bay, a coastal community south of San Francisco. Yeah, seven people were killed at two different plant nurseries, and a 67-year-old man is in custody for it. Our ABC station in San Francisco captured the moment law enforcement took down the suspect. Investigators say he was parked outside of a police substation too and had a mm -hmm. handgun in his vehicle, but they are still trying to figure out a motive. They believe he was a worker at one of the facilities and the victims were workers as well. In Monterey Park, people gathered for a vigil last night to honor the 11 victims of the mass shooting at a Lunar New Year celebration. Candles, flowers, and balloons were placed outside the gate to Star Dance Studios. Investigators say a good Samaritan stopped the alleged shooter in that incident from taking even more lives at a second dance hall that same night. Brandon Sai works at the studio that was started by his grandparents, and he was able to wrestle the weapon away from the gunman. Something came over me. I had this realization that I needed to grab his weapon. I needed to take control of the situation right. or else everybody would die, including me. Well, thank goodness for his brave actions. We are learning more about the 72 year old suspect in that incident. Investigators say he visited a police station twice this month, making a number of allegations, including accusing his own family of poisoning him. One acquaintance told ABC News he was a regular at both dance hmm. halls he targeted and didn't have many friends at the studios. A senior law enforcement official told ABC News they're investigating reports he may have been targeting his ex-wife. So back here at home, Colorado lawmakers are working to prevent another tragedy in our state, but it comes with plenty of debate and backlash. Number 7's Veronica Costa is outside our state capitol. And uh, lawmakers are already talking about changes to an assault weapons bill that hasn't even been introduced yet, Veronica. That's exactly it. And the work is happening inside of the Capitol here behind me to try and get the final language of that bill. Let's run you through what the purpose of it is, though. It's to ban the sale, the manufacturing, importing and transfer of these assault weapons and then also really define what one of these guns is. You mentioned those changes that state lawmakers made to this bill after receiving that backlash. Those changes were directly tied to the language of the bill. A previous version outright banned possession of assault weapons. Conservative groups leaked that version. So now these state lawmakers are really focusing on the sale and the transfer of guns capable of shooting many bullets really quickly. The overall goal here to put a hard stop to access to the kinds of guns used in shootings like the one we saw in Boulder at the King Super, King Supers rather and Club Q down in Colorado Springs. Now, if you're the legal owner of one of these assault weapons right now, nothing changes for you. Of course, that's because this bill hasn't even been introduced quite yet. That is something that we're waiting for and we'll keep you updated as soon as that happens. We're live in Denver on Veronica Costa, Denver 7. Thank you, Veronica. Well, instead of an assault weapons ban, which may be difficult to pass, Governor Polis says he favors broadening Colorado's red flag law and banning ghost guns, weapons that don't have serial numbers because they're assembled at home. But we've really got to get at this before it gets out of control. Uh, but ghost guns are representing an increased percentage of violent crime that's committed with guns in our state. On the red flag law, meanwhile, Governor Polis wants prosecutors to be able to petition a judge to remove weapons from a person deemed a risk to themselves or others. Right now, only police or family members can do that. Meanwhile, the governor met with survivors of the Club Q shooting yesterday, and they talked about the red flag law and ghost guns. But when the conversation turned to an assault weapons ban, bartender Michael Anderson said Polis had concerns. He said, you know, Colorado can make certain changes to gun laws, but, you know, people can drive two hours across the border to Wyoming and buy weapons very easily and bring them right back across to the state of Colorado. Those representing Club Q say a federal assault weapons ban is needed to address those issues. Denver has helped over 4,000 migrants since December 9th. The city released new numbers yesterday. 243 are currently housed in city emergency shelters. 647 are in partner shelters. As some migrant families settle into new lives here in Colorado, Denver Public Schools is making sure their children have some stability through school. So we're excited to learn your names. Aprender los nombres de estudiantes. Cole Arts and Science Academy welcomed 20 new students from Venezuela with a breakfast yesterday morning. I was there right after our morning newscast and 
It smelled so good. Uh, a couple of teachers from Venezuela and Colombia prepared homemade arepas uh, to welcome the students. Cole is a bilingual elementary school and felt uniquely suited to accept these children. The migrant families understandably didn't want to be shown on camera, but I talked to some of the current students at Cole who are eager to meet some new friends. I'm not from Venezuela, but I'm from Honduras. It is a it's a country in Central America. That it is really, really beautiful, and I'm excited to introduce myself into and the school to these new people. They get to see the people. They get to learn English. They get great opportunities. Like, Co is a great place to learn and have fun, and I feel like they have a good, have a great time. <laughs> Uh, the principal told me the new students will spend a few hours each day this week learning just what it's like to go to school in America, maybe getting used to the snow outside on the playground, and uh, they are excited to have them K through fifth graders there. Aurora is selecting its next fire chief. Alec Outen is currently the chief of a town in Virginia. He's worked for 27 years within the fire service. The city council must confirm Outen's selection before he can officially step into the role. That vote is happening at the next Aurora City Council meeting on Monday. Denver City Council is moving forward with a bill that would decriminalize jaywalking in the city. This comes after research found Denver police issued 135 citations since 2017. 40% of which went to black people, even though they only make up 10% of the city's population. The bill passed uh, on its first reading and a public hearing is now scheduled next month on the issue. A new center for young people experiencing homelessness is in the works. Urban Peak broke ground on its facility called the Mothership yesterday. The new shelter is near Acoma and Iowa streets just west of Broadway and will serve people between the ages of 15 and 24 years old with apartment style housing, support services and other resources. Everybody is thinking outside the box and everybody is taking a big risk because we know we have to change the trajectory of young people that are experiencing homelessness. So the project will cost about $37 million through both private and public funding, the largest portion of which is nearly $17 million through tax dollars from the voter approved Rise Denver Bond Program. Colorado State University is opening up the Rams Against Hunger Food Pantry this week. A CSU survey taken during the 2019-2020 school year revealed 29% of CSU students faced some level of food insecurity. Uh, so Rams Against Hunger was created to address that issue. The food pantry will offer a grocery-like experience uh, with a walk-in freezer, a wide selection of frozen foods, fresh produce, milk, eggs, and dry and non-perishable foods. Colorado's own Michaela Schifrin won a record 83rd race on the Women's World Cup skiing circuit. This is her on the course this morning of the giant slalom. And here's the photo after she learned she had won. A powerful moment for a Colorado athlete we've certainly been pulling for. She tied Lindsey Vaughn's record two weeks ago for the number of Women's World Cup skiing victories and now is trying to break the overall record for World Cup wins between both men and women of 86 total victories, so she's three away from tying nice. that. Well, check out uh, a glamorous bear ready for his close up. <laughs> he should be sleeping right now. We don't even know why he's out there, but yeah. Boulder Open Space <laughs> and Mountain Parks tweeted out these photos and they said this bear discovered a wildlife camera and struck a pose. Looks like he's ready for the runway. Uh, yeah, or a mug shot, I don't know. Officials say out of the 580 photos that they've taken on this camera, 400 mm -hmm. were bell bear selfies. That's true. He's probably he been stealing a lot of food down. lately. <laughs> well, more Coloradans died on our roads in 2022 than in any other year in the last 40 years. So we're talking to a mom whose mission it is to protect other families from tragedy. And nobody won the latest Powerball drawing. How much the pot is at now?